over there. So you think you need a $300 plus dollar track saw to rip down your stock? Now I'm talking sheets of plywood? Think again. I've never owned one, I've never needed one because I always use my jigs to rip large stock down to a more manageable size. I got some scrap wood I got out of my shop here. I need to make me an eight foot. I've already made a four foot one for some other stuff, but now I got large stock I have to cut down. I'm going to make some cheap, lightweight shells for a customer of mine. Maybe for a hobbyist, something light. Again, not heavy duty, but they will last because I put a little extra in the structure so they don't warp bend and they will last a little bit longer, but they are lightweight shells. So with that, with a few pieces of scrap in the shop, I'm gonna show you how I'm making me a quick eight foot jig so I can cut down my large plywood stock so I can start making some shells for my customer. This is an old scrap piece of three quarter pine plywood. And I don't have a full sheet of something eight feet long. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this on my miter saw i'm going to cut here here make sure these are square line this up i'm going to glue this and then i'm going to nail it pull the weight out let's set for a few minutes run my saw to cut it to length take that piece put it here glue glue it and nail it and run it again and then i'll get my third piece and i'll cut it to length Nice straight edge now. So line that up. Now if you don't have a nail gun, that's fine. You can just use some nails or screw it in. Make sure you countersink them so the net screws are flush. But glue it, put some weight on it. And in my case, I'm gonna glue it. I'm gonna use my staple gun there. And I'm gonna staple a bunch. It's like an upholstery stapler. I'm gonna staple a bunch. Put a weight on it, give it a few minutes, then I'm going to run my saw, cut this off, move this piece down there, and do it again. And don't got to be pretty. <laughs> There's nothing on there. I have no idea where my father got this, but this is solid Alcoa lead. It's about 30 pounds, so that's a good weight to use. Just gonna make sure that's on there. Square up the edges. That's all it takes right there. Set. 
hang on there for a little bit. Now for this, I always use my skill saw, my worm drive. This is my favorite saw in the job and everything I do. Even though I have like five different saws, this is probably, I have two of these. These are my favorite saws I use. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set that on there. I'm going to run this. And that's going to cut this to the exact width from here to there. Wrong side. I got to go this way. <laughs> Almost did it wrong. There we go. Now we got it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it all the way down. That way this heavy edge stays here where it balances. More stable with the weight on this edge. So I'll have a nice straight line and that's why I know I'm gonna, my blade is going to cut it every single time. my miter saw, cut that all the way off on both ends. I got a straight edge. I can set that on, line that up, staple this, and do one more. Now I got this other one already set on here. See it's all nailed. And these straight edge right here. It's there. So I can flip it over and run the saw down and cut this section. Let's cut this down. So I got one more piece to glue on and cut down, and I got my jig ready and set up, and it didn't cost me 300 plus dollars. And I got the last piece ready to put on. Make sure it's all clean. Glue it up, throw it on there, put the weight on, nail it, and this thing is done. Now how easy was that and how cheap was that compared to spending 300 plus dollars on a track saw that does the same thing as this does. may have a little different application as far as putting it on the material, but for the price, this can't be beat. With the jig made, I'm able to cut right where my mark is at. Remember, when you're making your measurements, if the front piece from the jig is the piece you're keeping add an additional 16th to an eighth however the thickness is of the blade you're using on your saw because if let's just say if it is 12 inches and you cut it at 12 inches you remeasure it well you're short that 16th or whatever it is of your blade thickness if it's 12 inches and you add it and you cut it you should be right at 12 inches 
So remember, anything on the front side of that jig, add an additional 16th or an 8th, 360s, whatever it is, the thickness of your blade. On the back side, on the back of it, you cut right along that line because that is cutting right at that edge. So front side add, back side leave it. That's it. That quick, that simple, and now you have a jig to cut large stock like I'm going to start doing on these full sheets of plywood that I have to cut for my customer. I just wanted to let you know if you have a need for something like that and you don't want to go to the expense of a track saw, this is a very cheap and viable alternative. You can get very accurate cuts until you get to the point if you need it that often and you're cutting a lot, then it might be worth investing in a track saw. But until you want to go to the expense of a track saw, because I don't see me ever buying one, I don't need it. This for me is a perfect solution for when I do have the occasion, I need it. Anyway, just a quick tip. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you taking time to view. Hope this helped you out. Maybe get a little insight. Maybe if you're looking for to do something like that, maybe give you a little incentive to go out and build your own and get ready. And that way you have various sizes to do different projects. And you can use them on different saws. So whatever saw you make a jig for, write on there what it, which saw it is. So you remember when you grab it, you don't grab the wrong saw. Because I've done that, had a different saw that the distance between the blade and the edge was different. <laughs> Uh-oh, I just cut my stock wrong and I cut my jig down to fit that so it won't fit nothing else now. So right on there, after that mistake, <laughs> I write on there which saw goes to which jig so I do not get messed up again. As always, follow me on Twitter. I will tweet out when these videos come out, little tips and different things coming on. Subscribe and again, you will be notified when they come out. But Twitter, I will tweet out a couple days prior. When they come out on YouTube, they'll just tell you that day they come out. So this gives you a heads up, So, and I don't expect you to watch everything I put out, but if it is something that may interest you, or may help you in your shop, or may help you in your decision making, that's what it's for. Be blessed, get out there, take back your shot. Follow me as I take mine back little by little, and always just get out there, build it for a friend, always build it for family, most importantly, Build it for your sanity. Thanks again for watching. See you next video.